shares in Taste Holdings shot up today after the group announced it had secured exclusive master franchise rights for the Domino's pizza brand. Domino's is the latest world fast food phenomenon to open up shop in this country. It's listed in New York and apparently delivers more than one million pizzas a day worldwide. Under the 30-year agreement, the franchise group has exclusive rights to develop the brand in seven African countries. Taste is already a player in the pizza market through Scooters and St. Elmo's. It's been expanding rapidly, although it's still smaller than famous brands, the owner of Steers, Wimpy and Debonair's Pizza. Well, to discuss, we're now joined by the CEO of Taste Holdings, that's Carlo Gonzaga. Great to have you with us, Thank uh, you. Carlo. T Taste Holdings I is generally the, the lesser known um, uh, among these fast food franchise players, but, but you've really been up and coming. Yeah. Do, a, a deal like this, how big is it for you? Is, is this like arriving? <laughs> Look, we've been at it for 14 years. Um, that's so long since we started Scooter's Pizza. But I think certainly, um, you know, having the, um, a, a brand like Domino's, um, you know, give us the license, I think says a lot about taste itself. So I think in that respect, it's, it's great for the, the taste company profile. Mm. But certainly, I think in the pizza segment, um, it'll redefine quite a lot that I think goes on. Because it's a one segment in South Africa that doesn't yet have an international player. Well, we've just seen Burger King come in uh, and yeah. a lot of excitement. I don't know if South Africans are as aware of, of Domino's, though. You know, I think there's, there's two levels. So there's one sort of the, the brand equity, as we tend to call it. Mm. Um, and what we've seen certainly today in the interest is that most people that travel have seen Domino's. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about what a global brand brings to, to the local market. Um, and in that respect, Domino's is, is really streets ahead of most other pizza players. Mm. So I, I think that customers will still benefit by that, regardless of whether they do or don't know the name just yet. Um, but we certainly think that there's far more brand equity than initially may seem apparent. You, you already have Scooters uh, and St. Elmo's, but, but you're talking about uh, re refurbishing uh, the stores. Yeah. You, are, are those brands basically disappearing and Domino's well, coming in? You know, to a large degree, that, that's our plan. We want to offer franchisees and assist them to convert their stores to Domino's pizza outlets. Mm. Um, and we think that when they do, it'll create a great foundation of 125, 130-odd stores on which to add new Domino's pizza stores. So we think that there's a really compelling reason for franchisees to do that. So yes, unfortunately, the business that we started, um, there's, there's a good chance in a few years won't exist anymore. Mm. Are, are you actively chasing famous brands um, that they're very diverse uh, across the market going for all different segments moving up in, into Africa? Are, are, are you tracking them? Look, you know, w when you compete, we compete for customers. Um, you know, at the corporate level, you know, there's, there's investors, but we've got a very diverse investor base ourselves on f and famous mm -hmm. brands. So I suppose in that respect, there's always, you know, some healthy corporate competition. But ultimately what matters is how we compete for customers, and we do that through our individual brands. So yes, th you know, we compete with them in that they own brands that we compete with. But at the corporate level, you know, the, I suppose the level of competition is, uh, is not as much as most people would think it actually is. Mm. I think it makes for interesting <laughs> headlines, probably. Uh, you are now, you, you've got the rights um, to South Africa, all our, our bordering countries, it looks yeah. like. Um, Zambia, I think Malawi, po possibly yeah. in the pipeline, but not Nigeria. Isn't that a, a very attractive market right now? Look, it is. Um, Domino's has awarded a license to a local operator in Nigeria um, some 18 months ago. So that, that license is already on its way. Are you um, disappointed? So, so that's not accessible no, to we, you? We're not disappointed. We've got, so, so firstly, we've, Within the Domino's system, Domino's master licensees typically end up buying out other smaller licensees. Um, and you've got three Domino's master licensees over a billion US dollars themselves in market cap. Mm. So, you know, at this stage, we've got a lot of work to do in South Africa and Southern Africa. So, no, Nigeria doesn't disappoint us. All right. So, so how many store conversions, how many new stores, wh what are we going to see in the next three years, say? So, we've probably got about 130 odd stores that we can convert within our system. And we think that, you know, depending if franchisees take up our offer to do that, mm. um, that can happen reasonably quickly. Um, and then we've got quite an aggressive rollout plan um, in the next five years of in the region of, sort of 80 to 100 stores. Sure. New, new Domino's Pizza outlets. Okay, okay. I, I, is 
could this complement your other offerings in any way or, or learnings from, from a new player coming in, um, what they're doing overseas, things like that? So, I mean, that's a good question, and I think we're already seeing that. Um, the, the, there'll always be an ancillary benefit into our other food businesses. Mm. You know, already we've been doing this for 19 years in my case. And we've already learned so much just from the, the few months of interaction that we've had with Domino's in terms of global best practice and the global technological platforms and new product development. So I've got no doubt that there'll be some spin-off into our other brands. Carla, what is happening on, on the ground? Because um, we hear, you know, sometimes when, when times are tough, people stop going to, to restaurants. So fast food can do very well because it's yeah. a, a cheaper option. Um, I've seen different in indications over the last few years, uh, and there's so much debt at, at the moment. How is fast food doing? So, you know, on the broader category of fast food, um, if anything, we've still got time starved consumers, dual income families. So, so the, the macro sort of trend that's driving fast food around convenience is, exists more than ever. On the affordability side, though, you know, I challenge most people to go and try and buy food in a supermarket at a cheaper price than fast food. I don't think it's possible. Mm. Um, so we've now matched that affordability factor that supermarkets have with fast food. You know, to your question on debt, though, we've got, we've got two brands that operate in the sort of quite lower LSM segment, four to seven, and we've certainly seen some, some stress in that segment in the last seven months. Um, so certainly that when, when sort of there was a pullback on debt um, and unsecured lending, we certainly felt that among those level mm -hmm. of consumers. The upper LSM consumers, not so much, though. Well, what about the upper LSMs? Isn't there another problem? Um, famous brands buying Wackerberry uh, recently. And, and I just think that there's such a force towards health foods. So are, are you not scared that, that you will be left with this assembly of, of what many people would say, junk food? So, you know, I think that, that the notion of health is, is quite un, um, undefined in terms of what health is. So, you know, we don't think health is eating wheatgrass or um, those little grass things that grow. Um, so, you know, in that respect, there's a level of indulgence that we provide. We provide value for money. Mm. And I think we've still got so much runway in that respect. Um, that but we will see brands that will adapt to the health requirements. You know, we don't use trans fatty acids in oil anymore. So, you know, even mainstream brands can do that and can move towards healthy products, gluten-free pizza bases. Um, they're becoming quite mainstream now in sort of mainstream brands. Domino's Pizza has got a great gluten-free base, probably the only one that I've, that I've tasted that I can, that I can actually stomach. Okay. So, you know, I even I the mainstream brands will. Too, yeah. All right, well, very interesting, and thank you for your time this thank evening. Uh, that was the CEO of Taste Holdings, Carlo Gonzaga. Well, the franchise industry is one of the sectors that government is targeting to create jobs. About 100 franchise stores showcased different products at the launch of the International Franchise and Entrepreneurial Expo at the Santon Convention Center today. After the break, we will be speaking to the